Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is part 9 of going through this GCSE Maths June 2023 Paper 2 by Edexcel. Now, if you haven't already, definitely check out all the other parts because we're getting towards the end of this paper to some of the more trickier questions, um, the higher level questions, the grades 7s, 8s and 9s. So um, if you are looking for these questions, then keep watching because we're going to start on question 21. So here is a graph of y equals f of x. And it's a trapezium on the top left quadrant. On the grid below, draw the graph of y equals f of x minus 4. Well, this is just understanding graph transformations. Okay, now, if an operation is happening outside the brackets of f of x, and this is how we use the f of x notation. So, for example, if it was f of x plus a, that means that you are translating... by the vector 0, A, whatever A is. So if it's f of x plus 2, then you would move the shape, all of it, two spaces up, is the idea. If something is happening on the inside of the brackets, plus A, then this is a translation by the vector negative A, 0. So it's actually the opposite inside the brackets and in the in the x direction. So for example, if it was f brackets x plus 2 close brackets, that would be two spaces to the left, right, going to the negative side from where the shape originally is. So it's just about understanding graph transformations. So our, we've been asked to do a sketch of f of x minus 4. Well, that just is happening on the outside of the brackets. So we're actually going to translate it in the y direction four spaces down so we just need to take this shape here and translate it four spaces down now obviously you would have it on one page whereas i'm gonna to have to sort of keep scrolling up and down here now i would take one corner of the shape and i'd move it four spaces down so it's going to end up here 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 and here so then we get a shape that looks like this so that is the first kind of transformation. When it's plus or minus something, it's a translation by a vector, either in the x or the y direction, depending on kind of where the, the plus a is situated in the f of x notation. Now, there's got to be a part b if there's a part a. Part b then says, on the grid below, draw the graph of y equals f minus x. Now, this is interesting. So this is a different kind of transformation. That we need to understand so if our original function is f of x y equals f of x then y equals minus f of x is a reflection in the y-axis so this is a reflection in the y-axis sorry not the y-axis the x-axis sorry a reflection of the x-axis because basically what's happening is all the y-coordinates go from being positive to being negative so they go on the other side of the x-axis so this would be a reflection in the x-axis, whereas, this is where I'm getting to, y equals f of minus x, which is what's in the question, is a reflection in the y-axis. So all the x-coordinates go from being negative to positive and vice versa, which is how we would explain a reflection in the y-axis. So all that needs to happen is our original shape, which, just as a reminder, looks like this needs to appear on the other side of the y-axis. So it needs to be here. And again, you would have this on a double page spread. So you would be able to easily sort of look at where the shape's going to be. I'm going to just shade it in just so it stands out a little bit. You don't have to do that. But, um, but yeah, just remembering that if the negative is on the outside of the f of x, then it's a reflection of the x-axis. So it would appear down here. But if it is f brackets minus x then it's a reflection of the y-axis and it would appear on the other side of the y-axis so a nice little graph transformations there i nearly messed it up then that just shows you how uh, close some of these transformations are but um yeah we got there eventually so just a reminder plus a on the outside means y direction plus a on the inside x direction but opposite and then here, reflection of the x-axis, reflection of the y-axis. So all the different kinds of transformations in the f of x notation. 
Okay, then this is where we're going to start getting towards our uh, really tough questions. Okay, let's um, have a look at this one. So it says, there are only blue pens and red pens in a box. The number of blue pens is four times the number of red pens. Rita takes a pen uh, at random, one pen from the box. She records the colour of the pen and then replaces it. That's important. Rita does this n times where n is greater than 2. Write down an expression in terms of n for the probability that Rita gets a blue pen at least once and a red pen at least once. Wowzers. What a really, really interesting question. Now, it's only worth two marks, so there's not a lot of maths going on here, but it's just about setting it up. So the reason why this question is towards the end of the paper is because you're not actually working out an answer. You know, there's not going to be a numerical answer here because it's, it's asking for an expression in with algebra in, in terms of n, which makes this question tricky. Well, first of all, let's look at this first piece of information. There are only blue and red pens in the box. Fine. And there's four times the number of blue pens as there are red pens. So in other words, it's in the ratio of four to one, blue to red, because there's four times more blue than there is red. So in other words, the fraction of blue pens is going to be four fifths of the total and the fraction of red pens is going to be one fifth of the total. Kind of happy so far. Now Rita's going to take at random one pen from the box and she replaces it. So these probabilities will never change, right? So it's not like we're going to take a blue pen out and then now the probability of picking blue again is three quarters. Uh, sorry, not yeah, three quarters because she's taken one blue pen out. Uh, these probabilities will never change, which makes the question a little bit easier. Now, she's going to pick n times, okay? Now, we want to know what is the probability. Um, we want to write down an expression of the probability that Rita gets a blue pen at least once and a red pen at least once. Okay, so interesting. Well, if she chose, let's just let's just forget the question for now. And let's just think about this idea. If she picked out a blue pen, let's say, and then she picked out a blue pen again, well, that would be four fifths times four fifths, wouldn't it? That would be picking blue twice, BB. And then you would work that out. All right. Well, if she picked out a blue pen and then a red pen, well, that would be four fifths times one fifth. And then it didn't matter the other way around. So if she picked red, then blue, it would be the same probability because she replaces it. So, in other words, we're going to, we know there's going to be some multiplication here because she's having n picks, right? And if she's picking n times, well, we're going to have to times those fractions together, okay? Now, instead of writing blue, blue as four-fifths times four-fifths, we could have just wrote it as... And again, I know this is a lot of explanation for two marks, but I just want to kind of... I know what the answer is, but if I just told you the answer, there'd be no explanation there. So, instead of writing blue, blue is four fifths times four fifths, I could write it as four fifths squared. And I could write red, red as one fifths squared. Where the power is the number of picks that she's had, right? Now, this is where it gets interesting. If you want to know the probability that, that Rita gets a blue pen at least once, and a red pen at least once, well, imagine she never ever picked up a, a, a red pen, right? So she kept picking pens out and she just kept getting blue, blue, blue. Well, the probability that she just picks all blues, right? So all blue pens is gonna be four fifths to the power of n, where n is the number of picks. So let's say she picked five pens out and they were all blue, then it'd be four fifths to the power of n. Well then by the same logic then, the probability that she would only ever pick all reds would be one fifth to the power of n. Right, so that is basically red, 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 n times, where n is the number of times that she's picking. So the probability that she picks at least one red and one blue must be one minus that because imagine imagine for a second that she picked blue 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 right so she's picked at least one blue but no reds well that would be four fifths to the power of three right so if i wanted the probability that she picks at least one blue 
then and one red then it would be one minus that so in other words in other words i take these two and i would do one minus it and that is the correct probability it's one minus four fifths to the power of n minus one fifth to the power of n because that probability is just picking all blues no reds and that probability is picking all reds and no blues and those are the only two situations that can happen where you wouldn't get at least one red and one blue. That's the idea. And because those are the only two situations where the thing you want doesn't happen, you do one minus it because it's the probability. this is the probability you want. So basically they've employed the tactic that all probabilities sum to one. So if you want to find the probability of something happening, you can just do one minus the probability of it not happening and the probability of it not happening is if you pick all blues or all reds so we've got to subtract both of those away and that is our final answer now this is a very very tricky question and definitely not something that um that a lot of students will be able to sort of get their heads around but is definitely going to be up there as one of the trickiest ones and for only two marks as well even if a student couldn't do it i wouldn't lose sleep over it if that made any sense uh, because even when I was explaining it then, I had to try and wrap my head around it to try and understand what this question was actually going at. But that is the idea of this, a very conceptually tricky question. OK, I'm going to leave it there for this part and then hopefully we don't have any more questions left until the end of the paper. So, oh, let me scroll down so you see the answer. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, definitely check out all the other videos on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And all I want to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.